So before the fatal accident that saw the 300 meter or 984 foot container ship Motu vessel Dali demolished the key bridge in Baltimore, the ship was in port for two days loading up containers that were scheduled to head to Colombo in Sri Lanka. Now, rumours of electrical problems whilst the vessel was in port have circulated online since the accident that has claimed at least six lives of the, of the uh, road crew that were working on board the bridge when it collapsed after being hit by the massive ship. Now, a worker for the container company Container Royal in Baltimore, Julie Mitchell, spoke to a uh, news company in the UK called ITB News a few days after the incident. I'll play that video for you now. It was here for two days because it was a two day working ship and those two days they were having serious power outages um like the like i said the reefer boxes that we have on there which is the refrigerated boxes they were actually tripping the breakers for our mechanics that were keeping the generators running on those while they were trying to fix the ship and it was just not they weren't even holding that they were tripping breakers on that so i mean they should they had a severe electrical problem now the reefer boxes she's referring to are refrigerated boxes or containers that must be added to the ship's electrical load when being transported at sea. Uh, Ms. Mitchell says that the port had to take the load whilst the ship investigated their electrical issues because they were tripping out, uh, you know, they were being tripped when the ship was tripping out, the power to those boxes was also going. So should the crew of the ship uh, not have sailed if they were having these issues? Uh, should they have contact, contacted support to get a uh, repair sorted? Well, it's not uncommon to have electrical issues on a ship. It's an ongoing thing, really. Engineers would, the engineers that work on board, that is, would investigate the issues until they felt they had the issue sorted. Now, if they couldn't fix it on their own, they would contact uh, manufacturers of the generators or whatever piece of equipment they felt was the cause of the system to trip out. Uh, to try to find the solutions, uh, potentially flying out technicians to investigate if they couldn't fix it on board themselves. Now, for the crew to finally load the reefers on and take that load and sail, they must have felt that they had is uh, the issue resolved, right? So it would appear that that was not the case, of course. However, we shouldn't jump to conclusions. We have to wait to get more data, as it's possible to have a completely different issue in port than the one at sea, even though it's likely connected. Uh, also, the crew of the vessel would have been under a certain amount of pressure to get underway, to get that um, stuff delivered that was on board that ship to Colombo in Sri Lanka. So that, that probably paid, played some part in the decision-making process. Unfortunately, it's the same with passenger vessels and stuff like that. There's always a, there's always a pressure on the captain to get things moving. Uh, this news comes as the owners of the container ship Dali deny responsibility for the collapse of the bridge. Grace Ocean Private Limited, the ship's owner, and the manager at Synergy Marine Private, both Singapore companies, said in a federal court filing on Monday that they denied any fault or neglect of the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. The companies are asking for exoneration from liability, but if they are held responsible in lawsuits, the companies are asking for a cap on any payout. The joint filing submitted in a Maryland District Court seeks to cap the company's liability at roughly $43.6 million. Now, uh, with the ship being in that situation, the bridge collapsed, the whole uh, channel has been blocked since the accident, or since the incident, should I say. Temporary shipping route has been opened on the northeast part of the main channel close to the bridge site. The channel was opened on Monday and it's been marked with aids for navigation. Now, officials said the passage is 3.3 meters or 11 feet deep with an 80 meter or 264 foot horizontal clearance and a vertical clearance of 29 meters or 95 feet. Now, on Monday, workers were uh, focused on removing a 350 ton part of the bridge. Now, we saw criticism online that there were only a few workers cutting, cutting the old beams of the bridge, so it's impressive the speed uh, they've, they've worked at to get that new channel open. A representative of the US Coast Guard who spoke to reporters at an afternoon press conference said that um, the officials were also working on creating a second southwest channel to help deeper vessels coming into the area. So the priority obviously is to get that port back in operation. Now there's been a lot of discussion about the data 
And we've had lots of people sending us screen grabs of AIS data uh, together with quotes of NTSB report giving times about things, you know, that things are happening on board. And I'm more happy with people, you know, looking at the data and talking to us about that data rather than, you know, just making statements that it was a terrorist attack or it was deliberate or, you know, space aliens using mind control, etc. And I'm much happier to be talk, you know, when people are talking about the data rather than, you know, other un unsubstantiated stuff. But we have to be careful with comparing the timing down to the second. As I mentioned in the first video we did on the subject, timing can be out on one or more devices. I think it might have been the second video, actually. We did a comparison where we took the, the live stream footage with the AIS data and the information about, a, about the, um, uh, in, what the NTSB had said. And it was slightly out by about 30 seconds, maybe. Now, the timing on board the ship was most, uh, most likely in UTC, right? Um, which is usually used on ships because it's an international time. It's right in the middle there. Uh, but obviously the minutes are the same regardless of where the hour finger is, right? The hour hand. Uh, most uh, digital equipment gets its time from the internet. They use time servers online to get the same time. This is how your iPhone is exactly the same down to the second to your friend's phone, you know. Um, however, as is usual on a ship, the equipment on the bridge is not connected to the internet. And as such, it cannot get its time from the time server online. So it's either getting its time from an onboard time server or it's just set you know, manually to a time by someone in the crew. This is something I regularly do. Uh, I've adjusted the time on uh, bridge equipment many, many times. Now, as the equipment on the bridge, for instance, needs to be running at the same time in order to operate, you have to make sure usually install a time server on one of the computers you have a local area network of all of the computers on the integrated bridge working together and alongside the ones down in the engine control room we have a time server installed uh, which is not connected to the internet and that feeds the time to all of that equipment so they're all operating on the same time at least on board um, now getting it to sync up with the actual time online it's almost impossible down to the second and even if you do, they can drop time over a period of time. So, you know, comparing the data such as the times given by the NTSB, you know, from the VDR, which was most likely offline and standalone with the bridge live stream, the picture of the live stream of the bridge, of the ship hitting the bridge, which had the time on it, right? And the AIS from say marine traffic or whatever uh, AIS uh, application you use, you've got to be very careful when you're looking down to the second. That's what I'm trying to say. So it's good. It's good to look at the data, but you just got to be careful with your conclusions. People sending us data saying that the, you know, the, the, the ship was heading in this direction and then the time, and then it changed course because of what they did on board. Well, we don't know that for sure, right? It's because the VDR time could be out slightly. That's what I'm trying to say. Thanks very much for watching this video. You've been watching a super yacht news clip. If you'd like to see the full unedited Super Yacht News video, you can click on the link over here. You can also find our channel links below here. And if you'd like to see more shorter videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to this channel.